RoboCup at Home. In RoboCup at Home, highly intelligent interactive robots navigate new complex environments in tasks ranging from registering itself for the competition, performing service duties such as cleaning or butlering for previously unknown persons, to grocery shopping in real-world locations. At Home started spontaneously by these researchers that wanted to start robots in the home environment and especially uh, not knowing what the home would look like. RoboCup at Home is application oriented. Uh, we could call it RoboCup for all people, but it doesn't really sound that good. So we call it RoboCup at Home. It's about the tasks you do in a domestic environment. Compared with RoboCup Soccer's abstracted environments, but highly sophisticated gameplay, RoboCup at Home takes on an inverted philosophy. So we took the concept of uh, what they do in soccer and we turn it around. In uh, soccer the idea was to have a complex task in a simple, simplified environment. But we said, okay, but every time you increase the complexity of the environment, for example, you take an orange ball and you make it black and white, then you have to adapt your vision algorithms to uh, recognize a black and white ball. So what do you see? Only changing the color of the ball, suddenly the performance drops because the robots cannot recognize the ball. So you have this performance drops over and over again with the increasing complexity of the environment. So we said we have to take simple tasks in a complex environment instead of complex tasks in a simple environment. So we started with simple tasks like follow me. We are now getting to the first spot where a person is passing between the walker and the robot and the robots should not be distracted by that, so that was nice. First stage is more kind of basic task of the robot, also in areas where they, were, they could have a pre-recorded map or something to navigate there. And for example, we have tasks where the robot has to assist in cleaning or in cooking. There's a lot of difficulties involved. For example, the robot has to know where it is. The robot has to not only detect people, but recognize people. It has to be able to learn new faces within seconds. And there is no human assisting the robot with calibration. This is then also judged by internal persons in the league and also by external persons from the league. So to so have the view from outside, so does it make sense what you are doing in this league from a really outer perspective? The robots have to be polite friendly. We take uh, great care about the appearance of the robots. Uh, the robots have to look good. So we actually have a rule that says no duct tape. When you come to RoboCup, the challenge is you are going to be given a new house built there in the field of play and you are going to have to interact with humans and manipulate objects and move and you have to learn the maps and you have to be able to handle any home. Uh, RoboCup at home is about the entire world area where people are in their daily lives. So we started in an apartment. I'm hoping to have like a little garden in a few years. And last year we uh, started to go shopping with our robots. My name is uh, Frederick. I'm from Team Toby from Germany and um, we are currently preparing for the shopping mall task. So we don't know actually where we're going. Uh, somewhere in Istanbul most probably. The teams they only were told the night before which shop it actually was, so there was no time to make a map. They could not measure anything with measuring devices. The robots just had to work. This is now a very special task in the at home league uh, named Shopping Mall, which is happening so really in the wild world. Actually going shopping is the task, which is a nice task. So the robot first of all has to build up a map because the environment is unknown. One guide will introduce several objects um, to the robot, so he will be saying something like, yeah, this is the milk or this is the Pringles or something like that. Memorize the Pepsi. Can you confirm that? Shall I memorize the Pepsi? Yes. With pleasure. The robot has to remember the position of the objects. At the checkout, um, the referee will say, um, yeah, I want to buy like three objects. Fetch me the Pepsi. 
Okay. You don't really know which objects, but some of the objects that are in an official list. And then the robot has to autonomously go to the positions, find the objects, grasp the objects from the shelf and bring them back to the, to the checkout. It's not on the rules that we need to keep the space really free. It's even allowed that some people might walk by in the shop. That happened last year actually to, to one of the teams because there was a, a little uh, kid that was quite fascinated by the robot and even more fascinated by the red button on the robot which was the emergency stop. The, the, all the other teams agreed that this is kind of an unusual situation so they got a restart. Shops are really colorful places and um, the robot easily gets distracted from the right object so one really challenge is to find and localize the objects that needs to be grasped and then exactly the grasping is also a task um, that will not be successful with many teams. We measure using statistics every year uh, which well, robot brain components are working well and which ones are working not so well. And the ones that are working not so well, we give them more points next year. The perpetually evolving rules and challenges of RoboCup at home spur innovation and important research questions for robotics in general. In the beginning it was difficult to convey the message to people that building applications is actually doing science because they said well you're just engineering. We found that we have all sorts of troubles and there's no research to guide us. So by building the applications we are actually figuring out what we have to research. Research is frequently going on only in labs and misses many many points that you need to consider for your robot. Uh, because labs are more clean, labs are also kind of more artificial, so you cannot think of all the things that might happen to a robot that is acting in a real environment. The goal, I think, in the beginning of RoboCup was to get the robots out of the laboratory. We started with soccer and we're humanoids, we rescue. And rescue is really out of the laboratory, although the environment is still controlled. And then at home, yeah, for for us it was more or less the logical next step is to have an even less structured environment. It was a very, how do you say, a beautiful kind of like also challenge. Nobody had was doing this before. And the RoboCup at Home started, which now has more than 40 teams and all over the world probably more than 100 teams. Change is essential at home. So next year we're going to start with introducing a sidewalk test, but somewhere this decade we actually want to start taking the public transport. Even if it's only one bus stop or one subway stop, we don't care. Go outside with the robots. Uh, like we're already starting discussions about uh, rights for robots, uh, robots having a passport, being able to travel. In South Korea, they uh, started in the parliament uh, discussion about what should we do if there's an intelligent robot asking for the right for, for to vote. You know, and they're discussing this. And it might sound silly, but who knows, in 10 or 20 years, we have those robots. This kind of future perspective, robots might uh, operate around you in your own apartments and some kind of public spaces. This is a very important um, tendency and very important for also the research questions that we have. So the league is about people and robots doing something in a domestic environment. What I really like about this league is the idea that we're really doing this to help people. I actually am convinced that having more robots in society will actually make society more humane.